Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Ghost of Tsushima and today I want to talk about Legends. This weekend myself and the squad have been grinding it pretty solidly and we're closing in on the 100 gear score mark, which puts us pretty close to being ready for the raid whenever it drops. So I figured in the event that you're diving in a little bit later or you have questions, I put together a beginner's guide going over all things Legends. The modes, the gear, the unlocks, tips for leveling and progressing efficiently, that kind of stuff. So if you do enjoy this and you do find it helpful then a like will be super appreciated and let me know what you guys think of this mode so far. So let's start at the top with what exactly is Ghost of Tsushima Legends? Well super quickly it's a completely free update for the game that adds cooperative components. Co-op activities are divided into three main sections, co-op story missions, survival mode and coming soon the raid. The co-op story missions are for two players online and we'll see you work your way through a series of nine different missions that lean much more heavily into the mysterious Japanese folklore. Where the full game was much more grounded in realism, Legends is much more about the fantasy element of those legends, set in a much darker demonic realm where Onis quite literally come to life. It's a fantastic addition to the game that builds on something that I've honestly really wanted them to dive deeper into the main game. Outside of that, you have the survival missions. These are for four players, and they are wave-based activities that will see you defending key points around the map against increasingly more difficult waves of enemies. Every five waves you encounter a boss wave, but completing the boss wave will refresh any zones you may have previously lost. You can purchase skills throughout the waves with your currency that you earn through kills, and these skills can help you turn the tide in battle. Both co-op story missions and survival missions have three main difficulties bronze, silver and gold, and with each new tier, the maximum potential gear level items that can drop will increase. Once you get to gear score 90, you can then take on nightmare mode, which is a weekly challenge where one story mission and one survival mission is selected, and completing those rewards you with high level gear and cool cosmetics. And of course, outside of that, we do have the four man raid to look forward to for the ultimate challenge. One of the main differences in Legends and the main single player game is the introduction of classes, where Jin Sakai could learn all the skills and be a master of all aspects of combat from samurai showdowns to stealthy takedowns, ranged longbow kills and sneaky ghost weaponry. In Legends, those skills have been shared between four classes, each of whom have a class ability and an ultimate that embodies aspects of that given class. The Samurai is for those that like to charge headlong into battle, katana poised and ready to decimate their enemies, your ultimate will see you lightning dash between multiple enemies and cut them down where they stand, and your class ability allows you to siphon health from nearby enemies. It is worth noting, classes can purchase more skills as they rank up, but unlike Jin, you won't have them all unlocked, instead you have to pick a skill per row. You can modify your class ability, and then you can pick one skill from each of the following rows depending on how you want to play. The Hunter is your ranged specialist, intent on taking their foes down from far away. The Longbow is by far their strongest weapon. Keep in mind all classes can use bows and swords, but naturally you'll lean more into your strengths. The Ultimate lets you take down multiple enemies at once, and your class ability allows you to stun enemies in an area. The Ronin is essentially your support class. While they are proficient with the blade, this class leans more into the mystical, summoning a spirit wolf companion in battle to take on foes, and having the ability to raise down teammates from quite literally anywhere on the map. And finally you have the Assassin, this class needs no introduction, it is the true ghost of the pack. Specialising in stealth, their ultimate will see you go invisible, allowing you to perform takedowns on groups of enemies, and your class ability will see you vanish into a cloud of poison smoke, dealing stagger damage to nearby enemies. You have to begin Legends by choosing a single class, but as you progress you'll be able to unlock them all and swap between them as you please. As you complete activities, both co-op story and survival, you will earn XP, which will see you rank up. And as you attain new ranks, you can also unlock more abilities. But on top of this, you will also earn gear. See, one of the ways Legends deals with the breadth of abilities from the base game is that it disperses them into gear items. Take your swords for example. By default, you will not have all four sword stances, which does hamper your ability to take on different enemy types. But as you earn more gear, you begin to see that certain items have combos baked into them and some swords even carry additional stances. So the stronger you get, the better your gear gets, and the more you have available to you. Gear falls within four rarities, common, rare, epic, and legendary. And with each increasing rarity tier, items can roll with more stats and bonuses. Furthermore, items of rarity rare and above can also be reforged and re-rolled. In a system not too dissimilar to The Division, you can select to re-roll a given stat, 
and can see the available options on the right, but note that rolling that stat will then lock in that item, only allowing you to re-roll that slot until the item is reforged. Reforging will re-roll the whole item, and we'll also see the gear level increase. It seems the gear level takes your max level items into account, so you can actually use reforging as a means to boost the level on items you already like and bring them with you, especially handy if you happen to get a low level legendary item. Of course, on top of your gear pieces, you also have cosmetic items too. Again, these have been divided into classes, so as samurai, you won't be running around in your ghost gear, that ghost the assassin, but as you rank up and complete feats, you'll unlock more items. Some of those items you previously owned in the single player campaign, and some of them are new. And the really cool items are tied to things like nightmare mode and the raid, but there's plenty of customization here, including emotes and particle effects for your blades. Now, when it comes to leveling up and gearing up in Legends, sure, there's no rush, I mean, you can do it however you please, but I thought I'd share how we did it, as it seems to make the whole process pretty smooth. See, when you select activities, you'll begin in Bronze. Bronze will drop gear up to a maximum level of 35, so you ideally want to get pretty much all gear pieces to 35, or thereabouts, and then move up. Now, sure, you could dive into story missions first, and you can replay them as many times as you want, so there's no gear lockout. But what we found to be especially effective when playing as a team was to use survival to begin with, whilst playing on bronze, to get our initial gear drops. It begins a little challenging, as you don't really have any good gear to begin with, but it does soon level out. Then once we began to approach the gear level 35 threshold, we dived straight into the story missions and ran through them on silver. Again, they began a little tough, but once the gear started dropping higher, it all began to level out. We found then, by the time we got to the end of the ninth and final story mission, we were pretty much at the cap for silver, and following this, we then picked whatever story mission we found the easiest, which for us was number one, and ran this on gold on repeat. The enemy spawns are random, so sometimes you will get a slightly more challenging combination, but overall this ended up being a pretty lucrative way to run missions on repeat, and we did very quickly approach the 100 gear level. Silver is good up until you get to gear level 80, and gold is good until you get up to gear level 105. Beyond that point, you'll then need to rely on the weekly nightmare challenges, and then ultimately, the rate. Whilst going through missions, you will sometimes get bonus objectives. The Oni chests are always worth doing, as they yield more rewards at the end. Meanwhile, the hidden scrolls, they'll just give you currency for upgrades. Still useful, definitely, but sometimes the scrolls are hidden in some really hard to find areas, and honestly just aren't worth your time. But either way, pick your activity, progress to the gear cap, and keep moving up from there. But that, my friends, is pretty much everything you need to know about Ghost of Tsushima Legends, at least right now. Once the raid drops, there will of course be more, but for now, have fun, get grinding, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.